good morning, it's Uncle Lou here. Oh yeah, that's right, it's me, Uncle Lou, live for you on YouTube today, and thanks for watching, I really appreciate it also, and two, back today with another 2018 college football team preview. This one comes as a request from Patreon member Ryan, so Ryan, shout out to you, sir. I appreciate you supporting the channel over on the Patreon page, and I hope you enjoy the video. If anybody else uh, wants to join up on the Patreon page, just click the first link in the description of this video. It'll take you over there. You can pick a couple of teams. I'll make sure I get the previews done for you. And we give a jersey away every single month to one Patreon member. Uh, so uh, go ahead and click that link, get yourself signed up. I would really appreciate it. Uh, up today, an SEC team, SEC West, the LSU Tigers. Uh, a popular request in a lot of different places. Comment section here. Uh, I've gotten requests for this team on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, pretty much everywhere. Lots of requests for this team. So we're going to get it knocked out today. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into the video, the 2018 college football team preview for LS Who? Tigers. Uh, we're going to do this the same way we do all the previews that we've done. I'll wrap up the 2017 season, talk a little bit about the roster and the coaching staff going into 2018. Then I'll put the schedule up on the screen and we'll go through it game by game and try to come up with a final regular season record for LSU. All right, LSU last year, what did they finish? 9-4. and four. Well, that's the sweet spot for LSU. And it 8-9 wins every single year. I, they haven't won 10 games, I don't think, since 2012. Is that right? So, been a while. Of course, head coach Ed Orgeron returns this year, why? I don't know. Nobody wants the job, I guess. Uh, I might talk more about that uh, in a second. I I'll talk more about that when we get to the Texas A&M game. How about that? Uh, but some changes with uh, the coordinators, or at least one of the coordinators, right? Offensive coordinator Matt Canada was fired. They brought this guy in last year. He was supposed to revolutionize the LSU offense, which had been stagnant for a few years. They've had some elite running backs, but no real quarterback threat or passing game to go with their uh, run game during the Fournette and Darius Geis years, and that really hurt LSU, keeping them, uh, you know, second, third, fourth in the SEC West, unable to break through to that 10-win mark uh, and have struggled. So he brought, brought Canada in last year, paid him a ton of money. Him and Ed, Ed Orgeron never really saw eye to eye, never really agreed on the direction or style of the offense. Orgeron decides to fire him and promote uh, current assistant uh, or tight end coach, anyway, Enzinger. So new offensive coordinator this year. They're going to go with a more traditional pro-style attack, uh, actually uh, more focused towards passing the ball, really, than running, and for good reason. And I I'll let you know why when we start to talk about the roster and who's there and, more importantly, who isn't there. On the defensive side, of course, they decide to keep uh, Aranda. Was that his name? Yeah, Aranda. They're paying this guy an ungodly amount of money to keep him as defensive coordinator at LSU. They're paying this guy, what is it, $2.5 million a year, something like that. Ten, a four-year contract, $10 million. Unbelievable. The defense better perform at a high level. Uh, I think they probably will. They, uh, if, if you're going to look at which of the two sides of the ball is more talented right now at LSU, it's definitely the defensive side of the ball. But let's start with the offense. Uh, we'll talk about uh, that, okay? Now, the number one, the glaring weakness right now when I look at uh, LSU's offense, running back. And this is weird to say because, like I mentioned, they had Fournette and, and Darius Geis over the last three, four, five years, elite uh, running backs both in the NFL now. Currently on LSU's roster going into the 2018 season, there's not a single running back that's ever scored a college football touchdown. So very inexperienced at the running back position. Now, LSU recruits at a high level year in and year out. So the potential is there for one of these two running backs to sort of break out. You got uh, Brosette, if I'm saying that wrong, I'm sorry. And uh, Edwards hyphen Hilaire, another one of these guys with a hyphenated name. I, I, I don't get it. What, what is, is this guy divorced? I don't know. Was Edwards your married name? I, I, anyway, you have a hyphenated name for no reason. So uh, that, that, that's a U issue, um, sir. Uh, so you got some inexperience there. We'll see if either one of those two guys is able to break out. I seriously doubt they're going to be as good as the last two you've had, but we will see. Maybe they're going to take a uh, running back uh, by committee type approach and try to match the production with these two that they were able to get from Geis or Fournette. Uh, I guess that's going to be the plan. Quarterback, sort of a mess here. 
Two, you go through spring training with two or three guys uh, uh, fighting it out for the job. Uh, you got you have a, a true freshman. Uh, you have a couple of different pieces there. Then in the offseason, you get a transfer in from Ohio State. What, what's his name? Burrow, right? I, I believe that's his name. Transfers in from Ohio State. This guy's a dual threat, run around type of guy. He can throw some too, though. Played limited action at Ohio State. Looked okay. Uh, he decided to transfer out because Ohio State, of course, is going with uh, Haskins, and he'll be the starter there for the next couple of years, barring some sort of injury or, or other type of setback. So he transfers out, lands at LSU. Could he potentially be better than, than the last three or four LSU quarterbacks? Yes, of course he could potentially be better. The bar is pretty low there. But again, this guy has limited in-game experience, so it, it's sort of a wait-and-see type of thing with him at quarterback. I do think he'll win the starting job uh for week one maybe we see two quarterbacks in that game i think that's going to be hard to do because of who you play week one you probably need to have the quarterback position settled going into that game uh, we'll talk about that when i put the schedule up but at best right now you're cautiously optimistic uh if you're an lsu fan about the quarterback position because there's just no proven talent there um you, you got some experience and talent on the offensive line Wide receiver, you always have a couple of playmakers there. This year, it's going to be this uh, guy you got from Texas A&M, Giles, and the only five-star you signed in last year's recruiting class because, of course, George is hogging all the five-stars now, uh, including a couple we just got from your backyard for the 2019 class, but that's that, that's neither here nor there for the purposes of this video. But you got this, this, this young kid, Marshall, your only five-star. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see him get some playing time this season. Even though he's a freshman, he could be one of your most talented receivers. Giles is a good one, too that you get from Texas A&M. So look for him uh, to be like a go-to uh, target uh, wide receiver-wise for LSU this year. Now on the defensive ball, uh, defensive side of the ball, the news is a lot better. You've got plenty of talent over there, plenty of depth, plenty of experience, uh, plenty of returning starters over there. I mentioned Dave Aranda. You're paying this guy $10 million over the next four years, so he better be producing at a high level, and I think he's got the players to do it. You're stacked on the defensive line. Uh, you got, uh, what's that, Fajoto and uh, Shelvin, right? These two guys here, uh, as good as any two defensive tackles um, in the SEC, almost. I mean, Auburn's got a better line. Um, that may, uh, may be Alabama. Uh, but, but anyway, you're really, really good in the middle on the defensive line. Inside linebacker, you got White. He's probably your best player on defense. He led the SEC in tackles per game last year at 10.2. And you've got a an elite, true number one lockdown, shutdown corner um uh over there with uh what's his name williams right yeah williams i think him and white could potentially be all americans definitely all sec type of talent so you've got talent depth uh and experience at all three levels on your defense and i think particularly early in the season lsu is going to have to rely again heavily on their defense to try to keep them in some of these games because even if burrow ends up getting the start and turns out to be pretty good he hasn't been in the system very long He's new to LSU. It could take a few games for the offense really to get its rhythm or to get going if, if they're even going to get going at all. Um, so glass half full, defense elite, offense potential with the quarterback position and maybe a breakout wide receiver or two. Running back, total question mark. Offensive line, a lot of returning starters. You should be okay there. All right, I'm going to throw the schedule up on the screen. You guys know how we do this. I'm going to go through the schedule pretty quick the first time. If there's a game that I can't see any possible way that you lose, I'm just going to say this game's a win and I'm going to move on. I'm not going to waste a lot of time talking about it. Same thing with any games that I think you're going to lose no matter what. I won't spend a whole lot of time talking about those either. Then there'll be a handful of games that could potentially go either way, right? Depending on how the ball bounces type of thing. Maybe you're uh, even with the team, you know, it's late in the season. Who knows? Rivalry games. But there'll be a group of toss-up games. I'll go back through the schedule a second time and we'll spend more time a minute or two with each one of those toss-up games, and then I will pick a winner and a loser for every single uh, game on your schedule. And of course, at the end, we'll try to come up with what your overall regular season record might look like. All right, week one, I talked about uh, this a little bit. No time to try to figure out what you're doing offensively here. You have a huge game week one against a team with uh, sky-high expectations for this year, expectations that I think are a little bit unrealistic. But you play Miami Hurricanes week one neutral site game. I believe this game is being played in Jerry's world. So no reason why LSU can't pack this stadium out. Of course, Miami fans don't even go to home games. So you, you, this will basically be a home game for LSU in terms of the crowd, I'm sure. But this is going to be a tough game and a tough 
matchup for you. I have this as a toss-up. I'll come back and talk a little bit more about that and pick a winner or a loser. Week two at home, Southeast Louisiana win. I mean, come on. Uh, I'm not going to waste any time talking about this one. Uh, no matter what happens in week one, uh, you'll have plenty of opportunities week two to figure out what you want to do offensively. Uh, you'll blow them out. Week three, you got to go on the road and play Auburn. I'm listening to this as a toss-up. This was a weird game last year. They jumped out to a huge lead on you. You came back and beat them at the end there. Um, almost cost uh, Gus Malzahn his job, to be honest. Uh, over 50% of the Auburn fan base wanted to fire him right then and there. Uh, of course, now he's the $7 million man for no reason. But anyway, this isn't an Auburn video. I have that as a toss-up. I'll come back and pick a winner and loser on that one, too, here in just a second. All right, at home, Louisiana Tech. Uh, win again just like Southeast Louisiana now Louisiana Tech better than Southeast Louisiana Louisiana Tech actually gave South Carolina a pretty good game last year South Carolina had to kick a field goal towards the end of that game to beat them but still talent level alone um, you should be able to run over Louisiana Tech I don't see this game being that close you should win this game by at least two or three scores okay another home game against Ole Miss <sighs> Ole Miss a hard time when these teams can't play in a bowl, it's hard to judge what their motivation is or isn't going to be for any particular season. Last year, I was real low on Ole Miss. I was like, oh, no, they just got hit with these sanctions. They're on a bowl ban. They have no postseason hopes. They're just going to roll over this year and be terrible. And that wasn't really the case. Uh, Ole Miss ended up winning a couple of games last year that I didn't think they had any chance to win going into the season. I expect them, I guess, to do the same thing this year. They got a new quarterback, too, this Tamu guy. They love him. They think he's better than Shea Patterson, who they shipped up to Michigan. Um, you get him at home. I think that's an advantage for you. Uh, I, I gave you a win against Ole Miss. Um, I almost put this in the toss-up category. Ole Miss has got some NFL wide receivers, but the strength of your defense is, is, is getting after the quarterback and your secondary. Uh, I think you'll be able to uh, limit what Ole Miss does through the air uh, enough to win that game. I gave you a win. All right, then you have a, a, another road game here at Florida. Uh, this is a toss-up game. Of course, I've already done a Florida preview. I'll put a link up here. Uh, if you haven't seen it and you want to check it out. So if you've seen that video, you know which way I go here on this Florida uh, video. Florida and LSU, uh, similar teams talent-wise. I listed it as a toss-up. I'll come back and talk a little bit more about that, that one too. Then you come home and play my Georgia Bulldogs. Again, I've done the preview for Georgia. Uh, I have to stay consistent when I do these previews. I, I can't pick one way on one video and one way on the other. This is a toss-up game. Uh, I think Georgia is more talented than you. I think we have an obvious coaching advantage over you. Uh, this is a toss-up, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you I gave you a win in this game because uh, I'm sure most of you have seen my Georgia preview. and I'm catching a lot of heat from Georgia fans and really from everybody else, too, saying there's no way Georgia loses this game. Kirby Smart's been in Athens for two full seasons. This will be his third. You know how the conference scheduling works. We have to play one SEC West team per year plus Auburn. We've yet to win an SEC West game on the road. Okay, Kirby's first year, 2016, we traveled to Ole Miss and took a beating. Last year, 2017, we traveled to Auburn and took a beating. This year, 2018, we traveled to LSU and take a beating. Georgia, I, I think, is, is going to be a pretty elite team this year. It's just very, very hard for any team to go undefeated. Uh, a lot of teams, most teams, almost every single team loses at least one game a year they're not supposed to lose. It was hard for me to try to find that loss on Georgia's schedule. Since we have to play you guys there, which is rare, we hardly ever do that. Uh, and given Kirby's track record against the SEC West, I pick you guys for a big upset there, and I have you beating, um, beating my Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, another game at home against Mississippi State. Again, a team I think that talent-wise is close to you. Uh, they beat the brakes off of you last year. I think you get some revenge here. You get them at home. I think you win that game against Mississippi State. So two, that's two big wins. That'll be two wins over ranked teams right there. Mississippi State will be ranked. Georgia will be ranked high. Uh, there, you beat those two teams. Um, you know, Orgeron probably keeps his job no matter what happens in terms of the overall record. Takes you into your bye week, come out of your bye week, and you uh, get Alabama. Yes, you get them at home. No, it won't matter. Alabama's going to beat you. Uh, again, Alabama, one of those teams where you really have to try to search and hunt to find a loss on the schedule somewhere. But you play Alabama every year. I think it's 2011 was the last time you beat them. You've had some good games with them. You've had some not-so-good games with them. 
Not sure yet really which way this game will go. I just don't see you doing it this year. I would be surprised, honestly, if Ed Orgeron ever beats um, Nick Saban. I, I'm not an Ed Orgeron fan. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that. I think he's in way over his head. You take a loss to Alabama. You go on the road to Arkansas, win. They're going to be one of the worst teams in the SEC again. I like Chad Morris, but it's going to take him a couple of years to get to pieces and parts that he needs to run his style of offense there. And in the meantime, it's going to be pretty uh, rough trying to watch an Arkansas game. You travel on the road to Arkansas and get a win. Next to the last game of the year, you come back home, you play something called Rice. They're the Owls, aren't they? Yes, they are. Ooh, ooh. Uh, yeah, who, who all you want? Uh, Rice is still going to lose, lose, lose this game, and it won't be close. LSU, you'll run away with it and get a win over Rice. Last game of the year on the road, Texas A&M. Jimbo Fisher, a way better coach than Ed Orgeron. No one would question that. I'm not a Jimbo Fisher fan or anything like that, but let, let's just be real about the situation. I think uh, Jimbo Fisher is going to have some success at Texas A&M. Is he going to win 10 or 11 games this year? No, not this year. Could be coming soon, though. But they are good enough to beat uh, you. You have to play them there, home to 12th man, all that. I think you end your season on a loss. All right, let's go back through, and I'll tell you the winner or loser on these toss-ups. The first game of the year, Miami, you lose. A uh, huge coaching mismatch here. Uh, Mark Rick, say what you want about him, blowing big games or stuff like that. Mark Rick's not losing to Ed Orgeron with six months to prepare. It's not happening. You're going to catch a loss in this game. Uh, Miami's more talented than you. Um, they're coming off a better season than you. They've got more returning talent than you. Their defense is pretty good, too. If they can get any type of offense going, then it's possible they could uh, – compete uh, with Clemson uh, again for the ACC title. I, I don't think they're better than Clemson, but I think they're better than you. I think you start off 0-1. Uh, gave you the win at Southeast Louisiana. At Auburn, uh, I think you lose that game. Uh, I, I, I know you beat them last year, but let's be real, it's kind of a miracle. Huge comeback win there. Uh, it was at your place. you got to go there this year. Auburn, a totally different team at home than they are on the road. Auburn gets the win. You take another loss. You beat Louisiana Tech. You beat Ole Miss. At Florida, close game usually. Uh, almost every time y'all play, I think these are two similar teams talent-wise. Quarterbacks, both huge question marks. We know Florida's quarterbacks aren't any good. Can uh, can Dan Mullen work some kind of magic with them? How's Burrow going to work out at LSU? Or are you going to go end up going with one of the other guys? Question marks there. Uh, I like the known pieces on Florida better than I like the known pieces on LSU. You got to play them there. I think you lose that game. Georgia already said you win. Mississippi State. Uh, I think you win that one too. Now, these would be two big upsets here, in my opinion, to beat Georgia and Mississippi State. So you can cry about this overall record if you want to, but I'm giving you wins over Georgia and Mississippi State. A lot of people are going to be upset this video for a lot of different things, but listen, uh, teams lose games all the time that they're supposed to win, and teams win games all the time that they're supposed to lose. It just happens. The better team doesn't always win, right? Clemson lost to Syracuse last year. Oklahoma lost to Iowa State. Ohio State lost to Iowa. Georgia lost to Alabama. So the better team doesn't always win, okay? Uh, you beat Mississippi State by week. Lose to Alabama. Beat Arkansas on the road. Uh, beat Rice at home. Then you go on the road to Texas A&M and you lose. I think Texas A&M beats you. What does that look like for an overall record? One, two, three, four, five. Seven and five, is that right? Seven and five. So... A step back from last year, right? Uh, four losses last year. I have you at five this year, and then depending on what happens in your bowl game, seven and five would be good enough to get you to a bowl game. I just think you still have too many question marks at the quarterback position. Um, your running backs have made up for a little bit of your deficiencies at the quarterback position over the last couple of years. You don't have that luxury. This year, uh, wide receivers, uh, you got a couple of playmakers there, but with a new quarterback, we don't know what the chemistry is going to be like there. I just think there's uh, offensively, you have a lot of issues this year, another offensive coordinator. So this is your third offensive coordinator in the last three years. I think it catches up with you. I think you get a couple of big wins. Uh, I think you couple, drop a couple of 50-50 games that could go either way. And I think you finish up at seven and five. Congratulations, Corn Dogs. You're bowl eligible. And everyone else in the SEC, praise to God, that that's enough for Ed Orgeron to keep his job. Because I promise you, there is not a soul in the SEC who is scared of playing the Cookie Monster. Have a good morning. <laughs>